G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday morning here in Australia, Bitcoin dominance continues to drop far out. How low can this go? Ethereum, you know, rising, gas prices still quite cheap. I mean, they were 47 yesterday, so it's up 10 guay from then, but 57 is still super cheap. And maybe the Berlin hard fork has actually, you know, really done sort of what it was supposed to do, which has played a part in this. And we've still got, you know, more things coming from Ethereum, uh, EIP 1559 and all the rest of it. So, you know, I, w I was nervous about, you know, these things coming out, whether they would really work. But look, you know, that they were up around around uh, they were up around a hundred uh, and above and look they've been as high as you know sort of 300 so you know maybe things are starting to fall in place we'll have to wait and see now the market cap is one point uh, two point one six four trillion dollars so that's good again it's up five per five point six percent so not too bad but people are really kind of you know B bitcoin's going up a little bit which is good but they are just piling into the altcoins at the moment and again, look, we spoke about the markets yesterday. I'm still not, you know, sold that this can't sort of roll over and go lower. I'm not saying it will. I never offer financial advice. But, you know, you can just tell the enthusiasm with how people have got into the altcoin markets at the moment. But if Bitcoin does drop and roll over and, you know, we go below 47,000 or something like that, you know, the altcoins will get really, really, well, they'll get hit the hardest. And that's just what you got to remember. But anyway, we're not going to focus on, you know, doom and gloom or anything like that. Let's have a look. It's basically a sea of green at the moment. And even in the seven days, it really does look like things have turned around and gotten a lot better. Again, you know, Dogecoin kind of traveling sideways at the moment. So 27 cents, uh, you know, could be a good buy-in price. You know, again, you know, if you fundamentally believe in Dogecoin, then it doesn't really matter what price it is. But if you're looking to kind of trade it, could be a good entry point. But again, you know, you'd have to go have a look at the actual proper chart. And I don't have that up at the moment. But based on just the seven days, kind of looks like it's flattened out a little bit there. All right, uh, XRP, there you go, coming back strong. All right, what has done the best in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Let's have a look. Polygon, I mean, good Lord, this thing just continues to go. This is really doing so good, and I'm absolutely stoked that, you know, I sort of held my Polygon slash Matic, you know, through the tough times because it really wasn't performing that well originally, but now it's, yeah, done amazing for me. It's got to be up there with one of my best performing coins full stop uh, i bought it quite some time ago i can't remember what i bought it for but it was literally a couple of cents so yeah doing quite well uh zilliqa you know again you know coming back as well like that was underperforming for a while phantom holo zero x wow nice good recovery uh Psy coin look these are all 20 percent and then you know we're still getting into some good sort of 15 percent and all the rest of it so this is literally you know v chain same thing v chain was not doing so great for me for such a long time and now same thing again it's up there with one of my better performing coins and it's just simply because i held held and held and held and yeah now i'm kind of reaping the rewards and that is one of the things that i've learned you know, like, obviously, if there's bad news that a coin, you know, has all these fundamental flaws and stuff, then, yeah, you got to get out of it and accept the loss. But if a coin simply isn't performing well, but is still fundamentally good and all the rest of it, yeah, for me, I'm just holding. And again, I never offer financial advice, but that's just my personal opinion. And that's what's worked for me. And it's worked pretty well. You know, what I'm kicking myself about is XRP. You know, I got caught up into it, sold it at a loss uh you know held on to some of it so that's good uh and you know what i held on to is doing well but yeah i'd be up so much more if i simply had a held so you know lesson learned but i mean again look a sea of green all right is there anything that hasn't done really well in the last 24 hours the last three days there's been one or two coins that hasn't and then it's all just you know those really small you know basically less than one percent losses amongst the stable coins is that going to repeat right now let's have a look Good Lord, in the top 100, there's one coin that <laughs> is in the uh, minuses and it's 1.1% and it's liquidity uh, USD. So there you go, Filecoin, uh, you know, still making a gain of, you know, 0.5%. So, you know, well done. That is, that's an amazing, 
you know, kind of 24 hours. And look, even the last seven days now are starting to look pretty good. They really have done well. Let's have a look. What's performed the best in seven days? Well, Polygon, nice. Again, Pirate Chain, good Lord. You know, ladies and gentlemen, please be careful. I don't know anything about it, and maybe it's a legit coin, but yeah, yeah I'd be really worried about that. All right, seven days, what hasn't done well? Let's have a look at that, just for something different. Well, there we go, Doge, Quantum Ontology. There's a number of coins that are down over seven days, but really only Doge has really been hit the hardest. The rest of them, not so bad, but again, it does look like they're all starting to bounce back. So things are looking good in the market. Let's go have a look at Bitcoin uh, price. Now, again, as I spoke yesterday, I'm still worried. I really need to see us break above the 50-day moving average and also begin to use that as support again because at the moment, we're not even back to the 50-day average and we could simply reject on this and then roll lower. And again, I'm not saying we're going to come down here. I've got this box in where I think it's a really great buying opportunity anywhere inside here. And look, even just to the top side, Again, of you know that forty-seven thousand-ish dollar mark thereabouts, I think that's going to be a good buying opportunity, and that is what I'm looking for. Do we get rejected from the fifty-day, and then we have to come down into here where there's lots of buying going on? And again, based on you know the one hundred-day moving average support, we might just simply reject from the fifty and come back down to the one hundred-day uh, moving average and aggressively get bought up again. But no guarantees in life. We're just waiting to see. For me. I don't think it's the end of the bull market, so any time we're below an old previous high, I'm pretty happy to buy, you know, Bitcoin if it's Bitcoin or whatever coin we're talking about. Again, unless the fundamentals have changed, if there's something fundamentally that's changed about a project, then you have to reconsider all of that. Or if there's something that's fundamentally changed in the entire crypto space, i.e. we're now going into a bear market, then different story, that changes. But for me at the moment, if things have set an all-time high, you know, I'm careful and cautious about whether I want to buy. I really want to see a correction. So again, we see this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to wait for a retracement. And then we get a retracement. And, you know, no one knows how much lower it's going. But if we see a retracement of somewhere around sort of 15 to 20%, for me, that's a good time to start buying in. Uh, not so much in Bitcoin because sometimes Bitcoin, uh, no, even Bitcoin, yeah. A twenty, a fifteen to twenty percent, uh, you know, correction. That that's a good buying price in most of these coins. But you know, in the altcoins, sometimes it can be a lot more. Sometimes you really need to look for maybe thirty to sort of fifty percent corrections. But yeah, really, again, no one's ever going to pick the top and the bottom, and it might only be a small 10, 15 percent correction before it goes, you know, another hundred percent higher in the altcoins. So you know, you got to work it out yourself. But for me. 15, 20% corrections, if I think we're still in a bull market, I'm buying that stuff up in whatever coin I'm in. Again, that is, yeah, that's where the real money's made. It's not that you can't buy here uh, and then just wait until it goes to here, you can, but yeah, buying those corrections generally works out. Anyway, that's the charts, that's what I'm looking for. We're still off, the 50 day moving average is about 50,700, so we're, sorry, that's not correct, that's not 50,000. Uh, 56,860-ish, thereabouts. So 57, yeah, sort of thousand. We're about 55 at the moment. So we're close, waiting to see what happens. All right, so some interesting stories I've found. So Ethereum price all-time high follows reduced gas costs and DeFi revival. Okay, analysts expect Ether price to rally to new all-time highs uh, since the Berlin upgrade resulted in a drop in gas fees and a surge in DeFi activity. And again, we go back to the markets, it definitely does look like that's kind of true. I mean, Ethereum, you know, 26, I, th I think that is its all-time high. I don't think it's been higher. And gas prices, well, they rose a little bit there by three, but, you know, still 60 compared to the 100 and, you know, 200 and 300 we're at. Maybe it's worked. All right, so we go down here and it says... After the Berlin upgrade was successfully implemented on April the 15th, the average gas fee began to decline to more manageable levels, resulting in an increasing in trading volume on the top decentralized exchanges like Uniswap and SushiSwap. So again, we just looked at it. Well, maybe Berlin has done what it's supposed to do, and we've still got EIP-1559, uh, I think it is. Uh, whatever it is, the EIP one coming up, I can't remember the exact uh, num numerals that come after it. 
Things are looking good, but again, I'm proceeding with caution. I'm still bullish on Ethereum and love it, but I'm just scared that the gas fees are going to go up uh, fairly quickly. You know, after all this stuff has happened, you know, the gas fees coming down has also uh, had a lot to do with. We've just been in a bit of a, you know, a retracement uh, since around about the 15th, not quite the 15th, a little bit after, but I think that has a lot to do with the reduced gas fees. All right. Now you can run an ETH2 validator node without fees or penalties. This sounds pretty good. So a blockchain financial service provider offers no fee. Now this is what I really like. No cut virtual node hosting that includes insurance against slashing penalties. This, that's impressive. So a blockchain financial service provider now, now offers an Ethereum 2.0 validator node hosting service, excuse me, that does not charge fees or take a cut of the staking reward. I'm not sure how that works. How do they not uh, take at least some kind of fee of the staking reward? Definitely have to look into that. Abyss Finance promises to make earning rewards for validating transactions uh, on the in development ETH 2.0 uh, proof of stake blockchain as cheap and safe as possible. So that's what I mean. There's got to be a fee. I'm not sure, you know, they say taking no staking rewards, fair enough, but there's going to be a fee which basically takes some of the staking rewards. So there's a bit of wordplay going on there. It'll just be interesting to see, you know, what they're charging for it. But it is good that, you know, they don't have any slashing fees. They cover the insurance and all that for it. So in exchange for locking, uh, into a staking contract with an unlock waiting period of 14 to 28 to 90 days. So that's what you need to remember. That's, you know, it might take you three months nearly to unlock your coins. Abyss Finance provides a completely free service and protects against loss of funds for slashing uh, penalties. Completely free service. Again, this is weird. I'm going to have to look into this. They're talking about uh, as cheap as possible. Now they're saying free service. <laughs> yeah, needs more investigation. But again, I, I like that. You know, they're talking about there's uh, no slashing fees because you have to have your, run, your node running basically 24-7. If there's any power outages or something, uh, you can get hit with fees. You know, you turn the computer off. And again, like I said, it's not running Excuse me, 24-7. Then there's uh, penalties for that. But they say they're going to uh, take care of that. So one reason Abyss Finance can offer that insurance and keep ETH 2.0 stakers rewards as high as possible is its use of all nodes as its node hosting service. Its research found that all nodes offers the best service around as well as being the hosting and staking platform that generates the highest overall income for ETH 2.0 validators. Data that's backed up by independent research from Consensus uh, Codefire. Beyond that, all nodes boasts a 99.90% uptime service level agreement, making it one of the most reliable node hosting service providers available, the company says. So this all sounds pretty good at the moment, and I definitely want to do some more research into it. But again, I just need to find out because it says as cheap as possible. Then it's saying uh, completely free service. Nothing's for free these days. There's always some kind of cost. So yeah. I think this definitely deserves uh, more looking into and I might do that uh, later today or early tomorrow and make that part of uh, my video. But this looks pretty good. All right. Lots of issues uh, going on with, you know, uh, crypto jacking things happening on the internet and things like that. So now uh, Microsoft and Intel introduce a shield against crypto jacking. So by partnering with Inter Intel, sorry, Microsoft has introduced a new defending system against crypto jacking called Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Intel TDT. This should be, sorry, this should increase detection ability and enhance protection against crypto jacking malware. The process involves validating data blocks and adding transaction records to a public ledger uh, known as a blockchain. All right, interesting. Microsoft seems like they're getting on board with things and they're out there trying to protect, you know, the people who are buying their software and things like that and teaming up with Intel to do it. So nice, you know, we definitely need as much, you know, protection as we can out there from, you know, nefarious actors and hackers and all that kind of stuff. So good to see that things like this are happening out in the space. Uh, and likewise, I'll have to do some more research into that, and, you know, What's the cost, I guess, you know, <laughs> are these, you know, things going to cost us 10 times as much as the old stuff we have, you know, just our normal, you know, uh, virus where, you know, already kind of do most of the work. So, 
yeah, interesting and more more research needed. And we'll, we'll have a look into that. All right, Ireland. So they're getting up to date with their KYC and all the rest of it. So Ireland now requires crypto firms to comply with AML and KYC rules. With the introduction of stricter regulatory measures, it's no longer possible to trade cryptocurrencies anonymously in Ireland. And look, I'm fine with KYC rules. I've spoke about this before. I don't care if people know what I'm doing with my money. I'm not trying to hide it. You know, it's it's what it is. Um, you know, all right, congratulations. You know what I'm doing with my money. If you think I'm doing something uh, good with it, then I guess you can take some uh, hints and tips from it if you want to. Again, never financial advice. And if you think that I'm not, then you can have a look at it and go, well, I wouldn't have done that. And, you know, you can do something completely different. But, yeah, I don't care that people know what I'm doing with my money because I'm not trying to hide what I'm doing with it. Now, crypto firms operating the country now need to register with a central bank within a three-month period. So there's a little bit of kind of leeway there, but this is going to become the norm. This is, you know, this is the regulation that people, you know, kind of get a little bit worried about because everyone wants to stay anonymous and all the rest of it. But you know, if we have it completely anonymous, then that's where all the bad players come in and do lots of bad stuff. Uh, it, we need to have KYC, unfortunately. L like it or hate it, uh, it's coming, and that's what is needed for this to be, you know, the worldwide mass adoption that we know is coming. All right. So the New Jersey, New Jersey uh, County sells Bitcoin that it seized back in, I think, 2018. So Mammoth County, New Jersey, they seized $57,000 worth of Bitcoin in 2018. So that would have been a bit. And as you see here, they sold it for just under $200,000. So they've, uh, you know, almost 4x their money there. So that's interesting. And, uh, you know, again, uh, if that was all of it, I would sort of wonder why they would have done that. Excuse me. I mean, I'm not sure about the rules and regulations about, you know, governments and that keeping Bitcoin because, you know, there's just none of that sort of happening at the moment. But if they had a whole stack of Bitcoin, I mean, I understand selling some of it to remain liquid in that, but geez, I'd definitely be thinking about holding on to some of it as well. But congratulations to them. You know, they basically 4X their money, so you can't really complain with that. At least 3X their money. Right, NFTs, I mean, they just continue and continue to grow. Now, the NBA franchise, this is the Golden State Warriors, has launched officially licensed digital collectibles commemorating the NBA's championships and iconic moments. So this I like, and again, for NFTs, it's more a, a sentimental value kind of thing than thinking they're all going to make money, because most of them probably won't make money in all fairness, but some of them will, and we'll continue to read on. So the collection includes 25 editions of the franchise's first NBA championships in 1947 and 50 editions of the team's most recent championship in 2018. What's more, there's a one-of-one one Warriors six-time NBA championship ring NFT, which combines all six championships into one NFT. Uh, now also, uh, yeah, one NFT. Now, the winning bidder of the one of one NFT will also receive a one of a kind physical ring. Now, that is due, uh, and they're due to be received at an on court uh, home game for the Warriors. So, not only do you get the NFT, but you get a physical ring to go with it. So, that's what I mean. That's what I like. And this one of one stuff, I mean, I really do think they will actually be worth money. And don't get me wrong, some of these other ones, you know, could be, but it's more. You know, you get a physical ring and then you get the NFT. You know, you get the on-court experience of being handed it to you. So, you know, some of these NFT things, you know, I love what I'm hearing. But again, I just don't know enough about them. I wouldn't have the money, you know, to be able to afford that kind of thing. And I wouldn't be able to get over to the Warriors home game to get it. So, yeah, for me, I, I number it's mostly I couldn't afford it. If I had the money, I, you know, I possibly would go after something like that. Uh, I'm, you know, I don't mind the Warriors, uh you know, more of a rugby league fan than a basketball fan, but I do love basketball, don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, very, very interesting. And it, again, we talked about another one the other day, the Eminem one, where there was a one of one and all the rest of it. It will be very, very interesting to see how much these one of ones go for and how they hold their value in the future. But again, the NFT space, I think it continues to grow and becomes an absolute behemoth. 
All right, Cardano. So the partnership between IOHK and the Ethiopian government will see a blockchain-based identity solution rolled out to schools nationwide. So again, this is over uh, in Ethiopia, and there's been talk about uh, Cardano doing work, you know, combining with governments uh, over in Africa and things like that. And this is the start of it. So announced today, the deal will see Cardano-based decentralized identity solution, Atala Prism, initially deployed in the country's schools. It will be used to create tamper-proof records of education performances across 3,500 schools and for 5 million students to instantly verify grades. Again, this kind of stuff is the future. This is where it's all going. You know, Africa is, believe it or not, is quite tech savvy. Uh, you know, they're on to a lot of things. They may be a sort of smaller, underdeveloped nation uh, in a lot of ways, but they are really, you know, they're jumping onto technology and they're using it very, very fast and adapting to it. Oh, excuse me, I've got to stop that. Uh, very, very quickly, and it looks like Cardano is at the forefront of that. So congratulations. Last but not least, MasterCard. All right, we know they've been getting into the crypto space for a while. So MasterCard is launching a new cryptocurrency rewards credit card featuring real-time rewards in partnership with crypto exchange Gemini, so the Winklevoss twins. Card holders will earn up to 3% back in real-time in Bitcoin or a number of supported cryptocurrencies. So it sounds like you might have a bit of a choice. Holders of the new credit card will earn up to 3% back on qualifying purchases. So you know, I guess we gotta find out what the qualifying purchases are. Uh, and they can do that with more than 30 cryptocurrencies supported by the exchange. Cryptocurrency rewards will automatically deposit the, be deposited into the cardholder's account at the exchange. So you're going to have to have a Gemini account. Now, there is also no annual fee for the card. So that is pretty good. It's, yeah, sounds very, very promising and very, very interesting. Uh, and again, I think this, <laughs> it is going to be the way of the future. Um, I think this stuff is just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And, you know, this is kind of where a lot of it will start for people. They probably won't be into crypto, but they'll have a MasterCard and it'll tell them, look, you, you get this MasterCard and they automatically sign you up to uh, an account at Gemini. So you don't really have to do any KYC in that because you've already done it to get the MasterCard. It could be wrong. This is just where I think that it's going. And then every time you use your credit card, again, you get to choose. And most people will just go Bitcoin at first. They're like, yeah, all right, Bitcoin, I know I can trust it. And, you know, they will, 3% of whatever is generally nothing, you know what I mean? But over time, because they might not check it regularly, and then, you know, they might not check it for a year or two, and then they go back, and then all of a sudden, again, Bitcoin's been on this big mad run. It'll be the other way around if they check it, uh, and it's been in a bear market. They'll go, oh, this sucks. But again, at some stage, they're probably going to check it and they're gonna get a nice surprise, particularly if they kinda of don't touch it for years. They're just like, ah, I don't you know, really know about this crypto stuff, and they just use this MasterCard, and then one day, five, 10 years in the future, they go, you know what, I better check these you know, bloody uh, rewards that I've got, <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'd say it like that, but some people would, and then all of a sudden they could find, you know, like a, not a small fortune, but you know, hundreds, thousands of dollars or something in there that they never thought they would have had. That is really where I see the mass adoption of crypto coming from, things like this. And that's when people are going to get cotton on who were really probably anti-crypto before, or not maybe not even anti-crypto, just I don't know enough about it, so I'm not going to really do too much with it. That's where I think it'll change perceptions and people will go, oh, hang on a minute, you know, I never thought I would have that 3% of, you know, very little for most people unless they're using their crypto are uh, their credit cards regularly and racking up mad fees uh, and then you know they will be like oh my god there's a lot of money there so yeah that's that's the future it's happening it's right there in front of us ladies and gentlemen uh, and again if you're watching this channel you probably already know but if you're new to this channel and new to the whole crypto space this is yeah this is where it's all going to start this is what's going to push people into that main adoption uh, and we're, uh, again, I believe we're still a few years away from it. All right, well, that's it for me. Again, things are looking pretty good. I'm really waiting to see. Again, Bitcoin, uh, we've got to use that 50 day, 50 day moving average as support. Uh, if we use it as resistance, I do think we, at the very least, probably come back down and test the 100 day moving average. If not, then maybe we go down another, uh, another leg sort of lower and come down and test the very low sort of $40,000 range. 
Again, no guarantees in life. I'm not saying that's what is going to happen. That's just what I'm looking for and I think could happen. Uh, as I say, I've always got my plan for what I'm hoping happens and then if and then my plan for if that doesn't happen, what I think might happen. And they're my two plans. Look, I'm hoping we break above the 50-day moving average and just start to set these new all-time highs. But, you know, if that's not what's going to happen, I am really looking to see do we, you know, get rejected from the 50-day moving average. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone seems to be on that gain train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.